listen, before you get upset, I, um, I just stopped by to see how you're doing. I'm fine. And, uh, are you, are you feeling better? Are you feeling? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Martin said that he's going to be able to release you soon. Yeah, big whoop. Well, I think it's, it's better than being cooped up here. Laura, I really want you to know something. What happened to you? It made for a lot of changes at the shelter. Yeah. Yes. I went there and I spent a lot of time so I could see what was going on and now we have more counselors and we have more guards more security and we have stiffer regulations and we have better guidelines so that if there's a situation that that needs helping we see it before it before it gets critical and the, the shelter it's a safe place now well that's great but that don't mean I'm ever going back What happened to you affected me, too, in a lot of ways. You know, you, you go around and you think that you're helping people, and then all of a sudden you realize that there's a world out there of problems that you cannot begin to change. And I couldn't stop thinking about you, and um, I had to do something. Flyers with my picture. Yeah. I went to New York, and... Um, I visited your principal at your school. You're kidding. What did he say, Laura who? He told me about your mother. About the fire. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Thanks. I wish I'd known about your mother when I met you. Doesn't make a difference. I mean, my mom's dead. She's never coming back. I'm sure that she would want to know that you're living in a safe place, you know? Have you given any thought to that? Yeah. Well, you know, so have I. Um, when I talked to the, uh, the social services here, and I told them that you'd run... Yeah, and I'll run again if they try and send me back to that stinking city. I'd rather camp out for the rest of my life than go back to that sewer. You don't have to go back there. Don't? No, you don't. Well, I'm not, I'm not going back to that war zone shelter either, no matter what kind of rules you no. laid down. Laura, it's okay. It is okay, all right? You don't have to go and live anywhere you don't want to live. I've asked around about some other living arrangements. You remember Myrtle Fargate? Yeah, Nellie's Carney friend. Yeah. Anyway, she's opened up her home as a boarding house, and she said that you could stay there. I'm not, I'm not going back to that war zone shelter either, no matter what kind of rules you no. laid down. Laura, it's okay. It is okay, all right? You don't have to go and live anywhere you don't want to live. I've asked around about some other living arrangements. You remember Myrtle Fargate? Yeah, Nellie's Carney friend. Yeah. Anyway, she's opened up her home as a boarding house, and she said that you could stay there. I know that you talked to Myrtle about Nellie. Yeah, I mean, outside of my mom, Nellie was the only person who was ever really there for me. Well, I know that you also have another good friend who lives nearby. Pierce. His cabin's incredible. I know. I mean, it's the only place that's ever really felt like home. Unfortunately, there isn't any school at Willow Lake. Well, that doesn't matter. I mean, I can't go back there anyway. Pierce doesn't think it'd be a very good idea. Did he say that? Well, not in so many words, but... I mean, I can tell things have changed. It's just not cool for me to stay there anymore. Look, 
I don't know about going back. I mean, me and school were never really a great combo. Well, did you ever give school a chance? Well, let's just say there are lots better things to do, especially when you're in the Big Apple. Well, I don't think disliking school is just part of being in New York. You know, I think a lot of kids don't like school. Unless, of course, you're a cheerleader or you're a whiz kid, maybe. Well, I mean, it's not about hating books and teachers and stuff. Was it the other kids? I mean, I know sometimes kids can can be cruel. They can be jerks. But I didn't care. Well, did they... I mean, did they think of, that you were different, or...? They thought I stank. What? You know, sometimes they'd whisper just loud enough for me to hear them, or... Sometimes I could see them just look at each other and laugh, or sometimes they'd hold their nose when I walked by. I don't understand. SRO people have this bum rap about having their own... Look, I ain't never gonna go through that again. Nobody is gonna laugh at me. I don't want you ever to have to live in a place like that, ever again. And nobody's going to make you do anything that you don't want to do. Cool. I mean, I think you've proved that you can take care of yourself and then some. You know, so if uh, you're free to leave the hospital, you, you're free to go where you want. Or? The catch. Oh, no, there's not a catch. There's just an option. You can go to school. And you can give Pine Valley another chance. It's risky. Well, of course, you've never taken any risks, is that right? Isn't that why you were so quiet when you interrupted my Woman of the Year banquet? <laughs> yeah, I guess I shook them up pretty good, huh? It's what we call chutzpah. It's greatly admired around here, especially by me. It sort of reminds me of... No. <laughs> you don't hear about any of my ancient times, I don't think. What, you were a smart mouth? A rebel? Well, I don't think uh, being a rebel is always associated with being courageous. Not in my case. But you're a, bit, a different story. You think I got courage? I think you have tons. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gotten in my face the night of my dinner. Yoo-hoo! Hi! Hi! Hi. Hello, how, how are, are you? you? <laughs> And how are you, sweetheart, huh? I'm okay. Well, I, uh... Do you remember me? Of course. <laughs> it's a long time since you shopped at the boutique, isn't it? Well, you know, <laughs> I've been trying to cut back on using the plastic. <laughs> well, look, I brought you a little present. A little get-well present. I thought you could use a, an outfit for the fall, because what you've got is a wee bit flimsy. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry I stole that dress. Forget it. We've all been up against it, one time or another, you know. You showed very good taste in choosing my shop. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, did Brooke tell you the idea I had about yeah. you coming to live with me? Yeah, yeah, she did. Well, mind you, it's not the Ritz, but it's very comfy. And you'd be real welcome. Well, I mean, how many people would be in the room with me? And, and would I have to share a bed? Because I really hate that. I mean, my mom and I used to have to bunk together a lot. And usually it was a single bed. And you can never really sleep that way. And darling, you'd have your own room. What? Mm -hmm. You'd have it yourself for as long as you want to stay. No kidding. No kidding. Mind you, mind you, there are a few house rules. Uh, nothing very much, but I'll explain them to you if you decide to come. Uh, I hope you will. It sounds great. I mean, well, but there are people who are worried about me. Pierce, I'll get a message to him. Good. Would you like me to pick you up when you get to start? Yeah. Good. 
That's wonderful. Then, I'll look forward to having you in my home. And I'll see you soon, and you get well. Bye-bye. Wait. Thanks. <laughs>